I'm going to show you how to use Illustrator to create the animated SVGs that you want for your video scribe or related software. And you can plug them in and they'll be animated. So you don't just have to use what is given to you for free by uh, video scribe or what you buy online. You can make your own. And I really think that's the freedom in this software. So you're going to want to check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the artwork from Photoshop where I created it. I'm going to take that layer, just select the art, control C, flip over to Adobe Illustrator, open a new document, control V, and then I'm going to hit the black and white logo under image trace. And I've got the regular pointer tool selected right now. And I'm adjusting the threshold a little bit. Now I click expand. You have to click expand to get the artwork where you can continue to manipulate it. So you can select A for the open pointer and delete the white space around it by clicking it. Now drag it back with V, the closed pointer. Go ahead and create a new layer, lock the under base layer, and you're going to turn your stroke on, usually run it up somewhere between a five and an eight using the pencil tool, which is the quick command N as in Nancy or pencil, I guess. And then you can start making these lines. As you make these lines is the way that they will render out by the hand or whatever selection that you choose in video scribe each point that is made is the path for the vector to create for the hand to follow so you want to complete those points uh, what i like to do is kind of create a mental puzzle for the viewer so that the line work doesn't necessarily make sense or give away what the object is right away. You can kind of move the pencil tool up and down a little bit or back and forth to create more plot points, to have it take more time to render out, the hand will move more. If you've ever made your own hand in Video Scribe, it's usually just two positions. So the hand will move between those two positions to kind of show the movement in the plot point sequence. So what I'm doing is just continuing to make sure that I cover all the black area. Now, a cheap, easy way to do this is just to expand the width of the pencil stroke, but you're not gonna get that cool kind of reveal type effect that I'm going for here. And even though my illustrations are moving at nearly light speed as they're being created in video scribe for the viewer, in the video that they're gonna see, it, it's still, you have the option in case you need to slow one of the illustrations down for timing of the story that's being told or, or whatever point that's being tried to make in the script of the video. So uh, as you can tell, the spray paint can is not being revealed in a sensible way where a viewer can just detect what object it is they're looking at as it's being illustrated. I found psychologically that draws more interest from the viewer especially when you get these weird lines over here where the spray paint can is embedded into the brain uh, that's in the illustration. So uh, just go ahead and spend some time mm, deflecting, I suppose, from the truth of what the object is that you're revealing and you'll get more interest from the viewers. But the main point is to take the lines from the pencil tool and no, you can't use a style. You have to use this basic stroke, this uniform basic stroke, which that information is located in the upper bar. I, I've tried to use different textured strokes uh, to reveal it in a more interesting way. That is not what the software likes. So the second point that we're going to get to here in just a minute is how to save the SVG. There's a certain way to save an SVG for it to render out properly in video scribe or a similar similar software uh, and that's that's really where i move fast in this video so i'm going to pause it so you guys can kind of see what i'm talking about i think it's presentation attributes that it has to be saved on and there's one other setting that you have to do correctly in order for the svg to render now remember i'm doing this in two layers i have the lock layer where we have the uh, vector artwork that we've created here in illustrator from our photoshop drawing and we have the layer that we're working on. And now I'm switching back to the close pointer using the tool V and running the opacity of that entire selection to zero and I hit control shift S and popped open the right folder was already popped open. So here we go. The settings you need to pay attention to when you go to save are SVG profiles should be 1.1. The type should be SVG subsetting none. Important part is image location should be embedded. So the image is 
located in the same file as the path that the animation will follow. CSS properties, this is really important. It needs to be set on presentation attributes. It won't work if you don't do that. And then follow the rest of the settings. This should be def by default. And then once those settings are all set, you can hit okay. And after you do that a couple of times, and uh, you don't reboot the computer for a while, it will be the default. So you can go ahead and just run, you know, 20, 30, 50 of these, and you'll be able to hit save and not really worry about what's going on on screen uh, for the format. So we take the ruler, go in there, same thing, create a new layer. After we've turned it into a logo and expanded it, you'll see that I just take the open pointer, delete the space around it, so that there's not extra white space included in the, the image that can kind of contrast or overlap another image that you're gonna be doing in your, your video, your animated video. So I'm doing the same thing. I think I ran the stroke up to a 10 in here because I was finding that the lines were a little harder to cover in the last illustration. I kind of get a setting and I just run with it. This is done for every every illustration that is animated by the hand in VideoScribe. So all those preloaded ones that come with VideoScribe or whatever software you're using, uh, this is how they were created. Um, and this is how I create this. There are the ones that have some color to them. Uh, I'll probably do another video on that because some people are interested in doing this. I usually like to use a limited amount of colors because in a whiteboard, explainer style video, I think of the, the media of the whiteboard and how it is limited to only a few colors. And if I'm working with a client that has a good branding situation, typically what we'll do is borrow one or two colors from their branding and create uh, kind of a color palette that shows up throughout the video, but not necessarily in the animated SVGs that we create. Sometimes, yes, but uh, for effect, uh, really was where I use color. So it's kind of restrictively. As you can see, this is finished. So I'll just select the whole thing again and take the opacity and run it down to zero. So that path is not seen and save the file to the SVG and it's set on embed presentation attributes. Go ahead and open up video scribe by Sparkle. Log in. And of course they got to tell you what's new all the time. Blah, 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 blah. Create a new scribe. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen this interface. There we go. We're going to put an image in. Um, so we're gonna run to the correct folder, the intro that we're creating and put the brain in there. I did, I, did uh, I think I went through and made this an animated SVG, but I wind up not animating it. So that was kind of a waste of time, but um, so instead of setting it to draw in the real video, um, it doesn't, but uh, you can see it here, the way I set this up. So uh, maybe I hit play. That would be really smart if I hit play right about now. Nope, gonna go ahead and compose more elements. I right, set the camera. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring in Another element of the illustration, uh, the spray paint can. That's a little small in comparison to the original illustration that I created. So there are places where those lumps of the brain line up. I'm probably not gonna find it. Uh, I'm just kind of gonna make something that works. Zoom out. And set the camera. So that looks pretty good right there. Click on this, type in the number of seconds that I want for the animation, the number of seconds for the pause, the number of seconds for the transition. Go ahead and lower those down. So just take the next element, which would be that ruler, and plug it in. And um, once we've got that in there, we'll probably start moving the camera around after that, but this looks pretty good. We got a transition on this last one, uh, the ruler. Uh, turned it off, we're gonna turn that back on because we're moving the screen and we don't want it to look just herky-jerky. There's the X-Acto knife, that's the other piece that goes on this 
right brain thinking. There we go. Oh, I need to change the default hand. There we go. That looks like my hand. It's not my hand, but it looks, well, it's nicer than my hand, but it looks like my hand. There we go. So that's how the brain gets drawn out. And there's the spray paint can, and it looks like it doesn't matter. It, but the slower reveal, it's just a real subtle, small uh, trick for enjoyment for the viewer.